Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Since starting Locksport, I've acquired quite a collection of tension wrenches, but these days I rarely use anything except this. The universal tension wrench devised by Chris Capoon. Today we'll be looking at why this little tool is so great and how you can make your own. So let's take a look. So Chris somewhat tongue-in-cheek calls this his universal tension wrench because it can so easily fit a wide range of keyways and offers both top and bottom of the keyway tension in one tool. This one was kindly made for me by Chris and I absolutely love it. It's comfortable in the hand, allows for really fine tension control and seems to efficiently apply torque on the core in a way that some of my other tensioners don't. I'm sure there are engineers out there who will be able to explain how and why this design works so well. All I can tell you is that once I started using this, I achieved opens on locks that were real barriers in the past. Now Chris already has a few videos on his channel where he demonstrates how he makes these and I'll put links in the description to those episodes. Given that, you might wonder why I'm making this one. Well I guess you can think of this as the idiot's guide, no insult intended, but I went through a lot of wiper blade inserts before I finally made a prototype that worked because I think there are a couple of nuances that Chris was doing unconsciously when he makes his, which I think make a big difference and I'd like to highlight them. I'm also assuming that some people might come across my channel who haven't yet tapped into Chris's videos, and this tool is too good not to share as widely as possible. So I'm going to take you step by step through what I did to reproduce this. First, let's talk about materials. You're going to need some wiper blade inserts. Now, where I'm based and given the COVID restrictions, I didn't find it easy to source these, but a lot of people in the community have said that a friendly word with a local car repair shop yields a steady supply of these for free. You can also buy sets of government grade sprung steel of the right dimensions. This set I picked up from Peterson's and it comes with a handy little tool which you can use to help create various kinds of bends in the steel stock. However, this wasn't cheap, and I found the steel in this batch quite brittle. It was fine for putting a simple bend in the tip, but as soon as I tried to then twist it to create the head of this tool, the stock tended to snap. Lesson number one, not all wiper blades are created equal. Thankfully, two great blokes from the UK Locksport community came to my rescue, so a big shout out to Jeff Yates and Bear Devlin, who posted me a whole bunch of different widths and grades of metal to play with. Having a decent amount of stock means that you'll be far less nervous about breakages, and there will inevitably be some failures along the way, as you learn to make the twists and turns needed to create the tensioner. You're also going to need two pairs of locking pliers, a heavy-duty pair of metal cutters, a dremel with an aluminium oxide grinding stone attachment, some narrow gauge heat shrink and a heat source. In this case I have a crafter's heat gun. Finally, I'd recommend a pair of safety goggles just in case. In terms of length, the measurements are, if you'll excuse the pun, flexible. I've made a range of different length tensioners and they all work fine but Chris's original is about 9.5 centimetres or three and three quarter inches long. So if you add the end pieces and allow for a little grinding and finishing, you'd start with about 10.5 centimetres or four and a quarter inches of stock. I'd recommend though that you actually start with a longer piece than this for reasons that will become clear in a moment. We're going to break down the build of this tool into four sections. We'll start by recreating the top of the keyway head, then we'll deal with the two twists along the length of the tensioner, and finally the bottom of the keyway tail. Without doubt it was the head of the tool that gave me the most trouble, and it's also the most precarious part of the build, so we'll start there because if we're going to have a breakage we can then trim off the broken tip and start again without having to throw away the rest of the material hence allowing some extra length in the shaft. Allow about seven or eight millimetres or just over a quarter of an inch of stock for the head and then apply the first set of locking pliers at that point. 
Having pliers with a nice sharp right angle at the tip will help to achieve a clean bend for this first part of the build. I found that a series of small pulsing bends is more likely to avoid snapping the steel. Now comes the most delicate and precise part of the whole build. If you look closely at Chris's prototype, the head is twisted up at a 45 degree angle and this feature is critical to the tension of being able to grip to the top of the keyway. The direction of this twist is also important. Until I dialed in my build process, I actually made several which twisted in the opposite direction and they do still work. But when in the keyway, Chris's design means that the tension continues to apply force in the direction of the twist, while this version would apply in an untwisting of the tool if you applied enough force. I suspect that Chris's design would last longer and retain its structural integrity better. So, to produce the correct head shape, we now want to twist the pliers towards us to create a second 90 degree turn while at the same time angling off to create the upward angle. Then just trim off any excess with your metal cutters and we'll deal with the rough edges and profile later. To replicate Chris's design, we then want to measure down from the head of the tool and make a mark at three centimeters or about 1.2 inches, which is where we'll place the first twist. These twists will create a comfortable platform in the middle of the tool for the pad of our finger to apply tension from and they add some flex to the system. The first of these 90 degree twists is clockwise and the second which is positioned about 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches from the bottom of the shaft is anti-clockwise. Any distortions along the length can be easily tweaked by hand. That leaves us with just the tail of the tool which is simply a case of creating another 90 degree bend in the same direction as the head. Again, the length of the tail depends on the locks you're likely to be working with, but six or seven millimeters or just a little over a quarter of an inch seems a good starting point. If you have excess material, this can be cut away and we now have the basic shape of the tool completed. It's likely that the cut edges of the head and tail will be sharp and you might want to shape them a little. I like to taper the sides of the tail on both sides so that it can work with a range of different widths of keyway, for example. So using the Dremel with a grinding wheel attached, work from a stable platform and shape the ends accordingly. I'd recommend safety goggles for this stage of the operation because the grinding process does produce small metal fragments which you don't want in your eyes. Then it's just a case of slipping on a tube of heat shrink material. In this case, I'm using a three millimeter or 0.1 inch sheath and then apply a heat source to activate the material. I like to use a crafter's heat gun because it doesn't scorch the plastic surface and results in a nice even finish. And there you have it, a brand new Chris Capoon Universal Tensioner. And if you have wiper blades of different widths in hand, you can go on to make a range of tools to cover most of the keyways you're likely to encounter. You hear so many of the experienced pickers saying that 90% of success in lock sport is good tension control. So it makes sense to invest some time and energy into getting the right tools in hand. And in my opinion, this is the right tool. And yes, that is an American 1100 I just opened. And if you'd like to know how I finally overcame my personal kryptonite lock, then stay tuned because this will be the focus of another episode which I'll release in the next couple of weeks. So a huge shout out once again to Chris Capoon for the inspiration and generosity in making this design available to the rest of us. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button before you leave if you found value in this episode. And until next time... Take good care.